So what's up with the MRI scan? How important is it to get an MRI scan? How necessary is it? My name is Aaron Boster. I'm an MS neurologist in Columbus, Ohio. And in this video, I'm going to be answering those questions. When do we need an MRI? When do we not need an MRI? Which kind do we need? And what are we supposed to learn? Don't turn away because all of that starts right now. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. In this video, I want to discuss the MRI. MRIs play a very important role in making an MS diagnosis. And once someone has MS, MRIs have an important role in monitoring the disease. I get asked a lot of questions. Which MRI scans are good? Which ones are bad? Do I really need it? Should we give contrast? Do we need to get a C-spine MRI? Let's answer all those questions. Grab a pencil and paper and let's jump in. So for starters, let's answer the question, what exactly is the MRI? The MRI is a giant magnet, which can take a very detailed picture of your brain and spinal cord or any of the soft tissue in your body for that matter. When you put your body inside the magnet and you turn it on, the electrons in your cells stand at attention. And then when you turn the magnet off, they relax. They relax slower in some tissues like fat than they do in water. And the different relaxation times creates the different colors, if you will. And that allows us to see the different structures of the brain very eloquently. The MRI serves as what we call a biomarker. It's a test which gives us information about you without like drilling a hole in your head or doing a biopsy or something crazy like that. And the MRI, which has been around since like the mid 80s, has revolutionized how we diagnose multiple sclerosis and how we monitor multiple sclerosis when it's being treated. So let's take each of those in turn, starting with diagnosis. Back in the ancient days of yesteryear, before MRIs were invented, the way that we diagnosed MS was challenging. We would have a human that had something bad happen to him. God forbid an optic neuritis or some type of clinically isolated event, which might go on later to become MS and it might not. And then we would say, Okay, call me if something else happens, and then we would wait. And if they had a second event, let's say, God forbid, a transverse myelitis, which occurred months or years after the first one, we would diagnose MS clinically with two separate events separated in space and in time. When the MRI came on the scene, it revolutionized how we diagnose MS. If I fast forward many, many years to the current rendition of the diagnostic criteria, after the very first event, which might go on to be MS, we can actually cinch the diagnosis with features on the MRI. Now, an MRI used for MS diagnosis, in my mind, needs to have contrast we need to give the IV dye during the diagnostic workup because the presence or absence of enhancing lesions can literally make the difference between yes MS diagnosis and not depending on the findings. I also think it's important when doing a diagnostic workup for MS that we image the entire neural access, meaning the brain, the cervical, and the thoracic spine. All too often, someone will present with neurological symptoms which localize to their spinal cord when you do their exam and a well-intending doctor ordered just the brain MRI, and they may be missing some of the pathology which is located in the spinal cord. So, when we're working up a human for possible multiple sclerosis and we're getting imaging, we want an MRI of the brain, the cervical, and the thoracic spine, and we want to use contrast and non-contrasted scans. To be a little bit more specific, ideally, I would like that study to be done on a three Tesla magnet. Now, Tesla is the strength of the MRI machine. And in the United States in 2024, as I make this video, there's two standard machines out in the community, a 1.5T and a 3T. And simply put, the 3T is better. You can see more. And so given my druthers, I always want my patients imaged on a three Tesla scanner. I also think it's important that when we get diagnostic imaging for possible MS, we use what's called an MS protocol on the MRI. In other words, the way they structure the acquisition of the pictures is an MS protocol. That includes certain sequences um, that are very, very helpful to clarify MS. And importantly, it typically does not involve gaps. Because when you take an MRI, you can do cuts that are contiguous, or sometimes you can literally skip spaces. And we don't want any spaces skipped. So getting that MRI of the brain, cervical, and thoracic spine, doing it on a three Tesla magnet, 
giving the contrast agent and using an MS protocol are all paramount to seeing all the things that we need to see to clarify an MS diagnosis. Real quick before we go on, if you dig this video, do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. Thank you! Now, once someone has been diagnosed with MS, the MRI remains important, but for a different reason. We literally change how we use the MRI or why we're obtaining a scan. When someone is diagnosed with MS and we're trying to figure out if we're winning, if they're able to live their best life, if the medicines we're giving them are working, or however you want to phrase success, there's really three elements that we're looking at to answer that question. Now, the most important is not the MRI. The most important is your life experience. Remember, you're a U expert and you know more about you than anyone else. And I'm going to learn the most by listening to you. Have you had an attack? God forbid. Are you failing a litmus test of life? What's going on? Now, second most important is a tie between what I call the MS Olympics when we do the neuro testing and the structural imaging, the MRI. And so that's what I want to talk about. When you have MS, we use the MRI as a metric to look for new structural damage. And I like to get at least an MRI of the brain once a year, at least until the age of 60 and oftentimes and beyond. The reason we're doing that is important to understand. Sometimes people will tell me, hey, Dr. B, I feel great. I'm doing great. Let's skip the MRI this year, which is exactly backwards. When someone's doing poorly, when, God forbid, they're having an attack or they're losing neurological function, their exam's getting worse, I don't need an MRI. I have them to give me the answer. I have their examination to give me the answer. It's when someone is doing awesome sauce, when they are right as rain and everything's going well, that's when I need to look under the hood to make sure that we're not missing something. Because if you have a clinical attack, that is bad. If you have new spots on the MRI, it means the exact same thing. It's new MS disease activity. And so if we get an MRI and there's new lesions or enlarged lesions or enhancing lesions, that's bad. And that teaches us, just like if you had an attack, that we are not controlling the inflammatory aspect of your disease adequately. So I think it's important to parse out how is it possible that the MRI can look awesome and the person cannot be doing well, because that's frustrating for a lot of people. People will say, well, gosh, if my MRI is okay, shouldn't I feel better? Keep in mind, please, the MRI is just a picture of structure. So if I took a picture of your house, I can tell you how many windows there are, and I can tell you if the roof is on, but I don't know if you're having dinner in your house. I don't know about function. Same thing with the MRI. If we see no new spots, that is good information, but it's not the only thing that we need to look into. And sometimes people can really be doing poorly with a stable scan because the old areas of damage are giving them problems. The MRI is not like a yes, no, we're doing okay, but it is a very important element to help us figure things out. Hey, real quick, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. It teaches the YouTube algorithm that you like this content and helps push it out so more families impacted by MS can benefit. Thanks. So which MRIs are important to get? When monitoring someone with MS, I think that getting an MRI of their brain about once every year is a great idea, at least up into the age of 60 and oftentimes even beyond. As far as imaging the spine, the Consortium of MS Centers recommends only re-imaging the cervical spine when someone presents with new cervical, cervical spine. And whereas I understand that recommendation, I don't always agree with it. The reality is that people impacted by MS can sometimes have asymptomatic spine lesions where they have a new lesion in their spine and they're not fully aware of it. So, whereas I'm getting an MRI of the brain annually, I'm oftentimes getting an MRI of the spine maybe about every other year, and I mean the cervical spine. Thoracic spine, I don't image regularly. I only do that when there are new symptoms which are attributable to the T-spine. What about contrast? There is a lot of hype on the interwebs about whether or not we should give people contrast. And I guarantee you, if you look at the comments section in this video, there will be a lot of discussion about contrast is good, it's bad. The bottom line is, as an MS neurologist monitoring your disease, if I can give the patient contrast, I learn more information. Now, if the person doesn't want contrast, I don't argue with them, you don't have to have contrast. And I still find the MRI to be very, very valuable, but I lose about 15 to 20 percent of the information that I would like. Now, is that a deal breaker? No, it's not. It's still terribly useful, 
just not as useful. Keep in mind, you are not an MRI, you're a human. And the MRI is simply a picture of structure, but it's a very important picture of structure. It helps us clarify an MS diagnosis big time. And once we have MS, it helps us monitor to make sure that we're controlling your disease adequately. Now, if you'd like to learn more about MS and up your game, click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next Monday morning video or my next monthly live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.